This year, I've gone from the highest high to the lowest low. When people ask me, I definitely get super awkward. I don't really want to tell everyone my entire life story at that point when they're like, so what do you do? It's like, oh, well, actually, I'm an Olympic gold medalist. And then I'd have to get into my whole, oh, I had to retire and blah, blah, blah. Here's where I keep my Olympic medal. Of course, it's got to be next to my President Obama photo because why wouldn't it be there? <laughs> I started skiing when I was three. I just grew up going to the mountains every weekend with my parents because that's what they love to do. And my sister switched to snowboarding. And of course, being the younger sister, I was like, I gotta do this. It was definitely the cool thing to do at the time on the mountain. But I mean, yeah, I sucked at snowboarding when I first started. Come on. <laughs> I went about doing the Olympic thing a little bit different. I quit the US team in 2011 to do my own thing and hire my own coach and go a different route than being on the national team because I didn't work really well with my national team coaches. It wasn't really fun. It was kind of more like a job. And I would just cry about snowboarding all the time and I just hated it. Going to the Olympics was something that I've dreamt about since I was a kid. I mean, the newest pro model, my snowboard. I put everything I had into it. I was in Austria and we were doing a catalog shoot. The mountain had been closed because we got a lot of snow. So we decided to go and build like a little jump outside of our hotel. And I just like went off of it, caught my heels, ended up landing like on my high back, low neck, and instantly just lost feeling from the neck down. I just remember the people I was with, they were just like, are you okay? And I was all I was like, I was like, no, I need help. Then like I started feeling just a little bit of like that tingling coming through my entire body. And so I started knowing that it was coming back. Once I started getting the tingling back, I was like, I need to stand up. I gotta get up. And they're like, no, 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 you gotta stay down. You could have a neck injury. And I was like, no, I gotta get up. So I went in, get an x-ray, and this doctor comes in, and he was like, you can never snowboard again. You have stenosis in your neck. It's congenital. You were born with it. I found out in October, and I didn't tell people until January. I didn't tell people for a long time because I was trying to figure out how to deal with it. The main thing is that I'm still walking. I can still snowboard, and I can do mostly everything. The hardest thing is finding myself as a snowboarder again because I was known as a half pipe rider. And so now breaking out of that niche to backcountry is definitely a transition. It was like I kind of started all over snowboarding. My main sacrifices that I've had to make are coming to terms with just not being able to leave the ground on my snowboard anymore. It's like every little stump, rock, any little hit that I used to see on the mountain, it was like go time for me. I am a great turner these days and carver, and which is pretty cool because carving and snowboarding has come back to being the cool thing to do. I think what motivates me as an athlete is my ambition. I don't want to fail, and I don't like people doing things that I can't do. <laughs> if somebody can do it, I'm like, I definitely can't do it.